question. How do you begin to encourage people to bear sufferings that they will probably face for their faith? Answer, make sure they know the great glories of the faith and of their part in it. And that is exactly what the writer of 1 Peter does in today's reading. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Wednesday, April 27th, 2022. In some of the most poetic language in the New Testament, the writer of 1 Peter casts a vision of what it means to be part of the Church of Jesus Christ. Quoting portions of the Psalms and of the prophets Isaiah and Hosea, he knits together a tapestry of images whose purpose is to encourage them to bear whatever sufferings they may face as a result of their faith. You'll recognize much of this passage because Parts of it are often quoted at different times of the liturgical year. What you may not realize is how these different parts work together. In this part of the letter, he says, Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Like a tapestry, this passage weaves together several ideas to form a cohesive vision of what it means to belong to the body of Christ. Beginning with the image of Christ as the living cornerstone, the writer carefully demonstrates that even Christ himself suffered rejection by the world but that in the end, he was vindicated by God. Using the image of Christ as cornerstone, he encourages people the, and the believers to see themselves as stones in a great building built around Christ. Next, he contrasts those who form the stones in the building with those who trip over the cornerstone. He's clearly working to build up their confidence and their courage by help, helping them to see that to place their trust in Christ is to be obedient and steadfast in the faith. This is fairly typical of the rhetoric used throughout Scripture to differentiate the faithful from the, from the rest. It draws a clear distinction between those who are part of the household of God from those who are not, with the intention of strengthening the resolve of the faithful. Next, he changes gear a, a bit and uses social language referring to the members of the church individually and the church as a whole as a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people. Quoting Hosea, who reminded the children of Israel that they owed their very existence as a people to God, he reminds the church that they have been called into the faith and set apart for a particular mission in the world. The language of royal priesthood in particular is significant because it indicates that the people of God have a specific role to play in God's kingdom. To be a kingdom of priests is to be a kingdom of people whose purpose is to intercede for the world before God. As Methodist theologians Will Willimon and Stanley Harawas once put it, the church's job is not to represent God to the world, but to represent the world before God. That's our priestly function. It's interesting that the writer uses a building metaphor 
as a means of building up the church. It is certainly an artful use of imagery. When we return tomorrow, the writer now begins to describe some of the particular circumstances for which the church faces struggle and even suffering. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.